uh, why, what, what makes you get up at 4 a.m. every day to, to, to finish editing the commentary and send it out to everybody. And I tell people I like, I like doing it and that's why I do it. And if I ever stop like liking it, I will stop doing it. And <laughs> interestingly enough, Hello and welcome to another episode of Mortgage Influencers, where we bring you professionals who share insight into the latest trends, tips, industry technology, and services to help you be a mortgage influencer in your mortgage business. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Mortgage Influencers. My name is Ginger Bell, and I have Frank Gray with us today. Carl and Scott are both traveling, but we have a special guest, and I'm excited to uh, to have him share so much knowledge that he has in the industry. And I know, Rob, you're you're uh, very humble and in, in, uh, all that you've done. But for those of you who don't know Rob Chrisman, Rob is really one of the biggest influences in our industry uh, as far as the pulse and what's happening and the news and the day-to-day operation. And if you are not registered for his uh, daily uh, newsletter that goes out, you can do that and uh, we'll give you the information about how to do that. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. So Rob, thank you for joining us. I think you're joining us today from a much warmer place in Mexico, right? I I am in Mexico at the moment. Yes. At the moment. <laughs> Not under witness protection or anything like that. Right. right. No, no. Just to be clear, you could sometimes. leave Mexico if you wanted, right? You, to be clear, you could leave Mexico if you wanted to, I right? I could leave Mexico. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just... I, I can come and go. I've got a passport around <laughs> somewhere. Um, I've got I've got papers. Excellent. Uh, but but sometimes, as you guys know, when you when you videotape something or record something. Sometimes whoever you're doing it with or for, they don't play it for a week or two or three. So I'm always hesitant about saying necessarily where I am mm-hmm. because somebody might not be watching or listening to this for a while, at which point I'll be back in, you know, Kansas sure. City or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But at the moment I am in in, uh, in Mexico and it is very nice here. Mm-hmm. Very good. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Nice. Well, One of the things that I really wanted to start out with, Rob, um, because I think it's a very interesting story as to how you came up with the idea, how you started with really doing uh, a daily blog and what you're doing and sending the information out. So uh, so give us kind of the history of that. Well, it's not as as exciting or dramatic as one might think. (laughs) And in fact, uh, I, you know, I went to Cal and got an MBA and, and they were very big. Cal was very big into creating business plans and so forth. And I never had a business plan for this. I went into capital markets in, in 1985, 1986. And that's primarily my background, although I have, I've done other things along the way. But uh, in, in the late 90s, or I should say early 2000s, uh, I was... Uh, working for a pipeline hedging company. Tuttle & Company became TRMS. TRMS became Compass Analytics. And at that point, uh, it was a it was with TMRF, TRMS, Tuttle Risk Management System. So the, the thing about hedging pipelines is that we had conference calls every day with our clients. Every day at a certain time, that particular client let's say J.I. Kislak in Florida or you know, Supreme Lending in Texas, management knew that they could at that point get together in one room and, you know, hey, we're calling Rob at you know, 11 o'clock East Coast time every day to talk about the market, talk about their pipeline, talk about their position, talk about you know, what's going to happen tomorrow and so on and, and the strategy, map out the hedging strategy for the, for that day because you wanted the same strategy every day. You don't want to, you know, take chances. Anyway, you would go through that every day. And then when email came along, it became easier to send out kind of a market snapshot via email. And oftentimes is what happens in this industry is if you if you like somebody and they work for in this case a vendor, you're gonna maybe you want them on board your own company, and so I 
got hired away and went to work for an originator or two running capital markets. And a couple of times, two or three times a week, or, or it got to be every day, I would send out a snippet to the loan officers or account executives, if it was a wholesale company, about what was going on in the marketplace. And inevitably, what tends to happen, as you guys know, is if, if John Smith goes from ABC mortgage to XYZ mortgage, I could easily get an email from John Smith the next day or the next week saying, hey, Rob, I know we don't work at the same company anymore, but I like your market snapshot. Can you add me to your distribution list? And so it was very organic. And in 2008, <laughs> I kind of went along. And yeah, it was fine. It was part of my job. I enjoyed doing it. And then in 2008, my mom died. I wanted to spend more time with my family. I wanted to uh, help my dad deal with the estate and all that kind of stuff. And the market was, you know, the market was what the market was. And so I thought, I'm just going to, quote, retire. Uh, but I will step back from the day to day. At that point, I was working for a great guy, Rob Hurt, at RPM slash now Lend Us. But, uh, you know, I told Rob in April of 2008, look, I've got, I've got to deal with my family stuff here and so forth. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Finally, in October, <laughs> I was able to actually, quote, retire. And, uh, and Rob and I are still friends and so forth. But I kept sending out this commentary, which at that point was going to, you know, I don't know, three, four or 500 people or something. And I continued to send it out despite retiring. And it grew just organically. And then at some point, somebody said, hey, I'm, I'm out of a job. Uh, can you keep your ears open for some kind of job? I don't remember what it was. And so I said, sure. And so then I, you know, made, introduced, I think it was, a, it was, a, I think it was a him, introduced him around and, and I think he got a job. But then, so companies saw that as my distribution grew, they could put an ad in there for an underwriter or a loan officer or a head of marketing or whatever. And it would get a little bit of traction. It would, it would get, disseminated. And so I started running ads. The intent was never to make money from advertising. The, the intent all along has been to help people uh, hear about jobs that are out there or hear about products that they're thinking, but they're not happy with their subservicer. And of course, no one is really happy with their subservicer <laughs> or their LOS or whatever software they're using. So if they're looking for a new LOS or a new subservice or, or new whatever, or, or a system to help uh, loan officers be more compliant, you know, they, they would see an ad in there. Or specifically, going back to jobs, if somebody was out of a job, they could, you know, maybe they'll get a job for, through my commentary. And it's really neat um, in terms of the, the, the nice things that people say to me uh, when, I'll, when I'll go speak somewhere because... I've never been an originator and I don't know the feeling necessarily of putting a family in a home and going home that night and thinking, wow, I really, you know, I helped the, the Smiths get into that house and great school district, et cetera. But I do, when I meet people, people will come up to me and say, Hey, you know, I got my job five years ago through your commentary. I'm happy. You know, it's been great. So people will come up to me and say some very nice things about uh, jobs, you know, job openings that they they saw in my commentary. And I will always say, you know, it's, it's you. It's not me. You know, I just me posting it is, well, you know, you you helped. I wouldn't have seen it if it weren't for that. So like I say, people people have some very nice things to say. And uh, Frank Ginger, the usual question is, you know, why do you keep doing this? You know. Uh, why, what, what makes you get up at 4 a.m. every day to, to, to finish editing the commentary and send it out to everybody. And I tell people I like, I like doing it, and that's why I do it. And if I ever stop like, liking it, I will stop doing it. And <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, a month or two ago, I, now this is really going to sound first world problems, but going back to pipeline hedging and Compass Analytics, the owner of Compass Analytics 
was a, uh, a couple, mainly a guy, Rob Kessel and Robin Kelly bought a boat, which they're a catamaran, which they're sailing. Well, I'm not going to get into the, the, the specifics, but pretty much sailing kind of around the world. And they asked people to come join them on, you know, for stints on their boat. So about a month ago, I found myself in Fiji with almost no internet access. And so prior to that, I had mapped out with my son, Robbie, who I understand you're going to have on the show, yep. um, mapped out him doing my commentary for me because the internet uh, was non-existent in several places. So a, the baton was temporarily passed uh, for two or three weeks, unbeknownst to the general readership. Right. And uh, he, he pulled it off very, very well. In fact, right from day one, he would get, or he slash I would get compliments. Like I had, a, I had a friend write to me the first day that Robbie did it. And I saw it later and said, Rob, did you take a creative writing class uh, over the summer? <laughs> Boy, uh, you've gotten a lot is- better all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're not, you know, I don't see any misspellings. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Robbie, Robbie done good. But I, I, it's nice to know in the back of my head that if I ever do just want to stop doing it, I, I can, and you know, it'll be, you know, it'll be in good hands. But for now, I enjoy it. I enjoy, like, like you guys do, going around the country, meeting people, going to conferences, chatting with them. And just trying to be sometimes, uh, you know, a little bit of a guide and try to help them. And other times just be a friend and other times just kind of show up, uh, which I think different, different groups appreciate. And it's, and it, it is, a, it is a great industry because as so many people on this call know, and as you guys know, the, the industry is filled with some really neat people and they're, and they're generally smart and quick witted and savvy and a lot of small business success stories that are out there. And so it's a, it's a neat business to be in and it's easy to get excited about it. And sure we go through some cycles, but um, you know, it's, it's a good place to be. Yeah, most definitely. I think it's neat that um, it's interesting that you're, you're working with Robbie and you got to dip your toe in the water a little bit with uh, handing the baton over, if you will, you know, like, you know, could this work? you know, does this work? And it did, you know, and, and knowing that that options out there for you is it's interesting to me because right now I'm doing that with my daughter and my son building a a mortgage brand with them slash for Uh, them, for them that uh, I'm going to help them get it up and running and functional and all that stuff. And I wanted to just kind of step away from it. It's, it's, and let them run it kind of, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, you know, putting together a, a sort of a legacy that your kids can, can take over, you know, and, and, and run with. And, and with regard to your comment about this is a neat industry, this is one of the things you can do in this industry from different aspects, you know, like from your standpoint, you could do it from what you're doing from a, an originator standpoint, you could build a business and turn that over to your, to your family as well. You could, you know, it's a legacy building business if you treat it that way, you know, and uh, I just think it's neat. You're doing that. I think it's super cool. And um, I got a question for you. When did you make the switch? Because I remember back in the day, it was an email. Like you said, it was just an email that people would get. It was literally the, on an email. You would put your synopsis or whatever on an, on an email. But later, that turned into more of a blog type of a format, right? Like an online web-based sort of blog format. Um, is that where it is? Is that how they access your information now is through the, is it, you know, Rob Chrisman.com or, or well, how does um, it work? How does it work? So there's yeah. a, there's a, uh, for anybody looking to distribute something as the subscription, initially the subscriptions were such that I would just literally mail out the commentary yeah. to a couple hundred people or yeah. hundred people or a thousand people. I remember that. And then yeah. at, at some point an attorney, attorney friend of mine said, you know, uh, you're, you're starting to pick up some numbers here. It might make sense for you to use a service like constant contact mm, and it might go. make service or might make sense to you know, have a little website, yeah. at least get your name on there, www.robchristman.com. And you can post your commentary there and then you can send it out through constant contact and you can mm. keep emailing folks. Uh, and so I did that several years ago and I don't, 
this is going to sound so once again, I don't have a business plan and still naive about these things. I don't know exactly how many hits my website receives a day from people mm-hmm. reading that reading the commentary there. I, I see what goes out through constant contact. I also know that my email is forwarded, which I don't track. And I also know how many I send it to directly. And some companies or some organizations post it on their website, which I don't kind of track, but I do kind of track because if somebody's redistributing it, I, I'd like to talk to them. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it goes out to about 70,000 people a day. Yeah. And I don't, it's like, I'd rather be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd rather be, I'm going to go out swimming here pretty soon. I'd rather be swimming in the ocean than, than trying to track down clicks and, and who's doing what with it. So people, people read it for, uh, through a variety of sources, whatever's easiest for them. Mm-hmm. And I don't kind of say it's my way or the highway kind of thing. I try to, you know, I've got the website, I've got constant contact, I've got email, they can, they can figure it out. And then, you know, they don't have to read it at all. You know, every day, uh, you know, five or 10 people unsubscribe, although usually they're changing their email. So they unsubscribe from the old, mm-hmm. old email, and yeah. a new one. But generally speaking, uh, if they, it's, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get the information out there and I'm not saying, you need to read it this way. I, I try to make it flexible. And, and yeah. They can Accessible. Yeah. Good. Nick. I think you're syndicated too, though. Isn't one of the news said news. Yeah. You, I see you in other places. Yeah. You used to be syndicated. No, you, I think you are. You I'd like, like to hear. I'd you, like to see. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think you, you are. I you just you don't are. know. It. Yeah. I think the mortgage, mortgage news daily. I think. Oh yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. More, that's another one. You know, mortgage news daily sends it out. Uh, yeah. to Brasa, which is mortgage success stores, sends it go. out. Yeah. And they pay me, they each pay me, you know, hundred dollars a month to send it out. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I want to talk about um maybe a little more because you started this <laughs> we figured as, that <laughs> you started sharing information, right? <laughs> and so I know you get asked to speak at a lot of conferences. And so was that something that you were doing a lot before? Was that something that you think was a result of all of this? What do you think? I, I think that uh, I never set out to, to, to speak per se. There, there are always calls for speakers. Like the MBA will send out a call for the, you know, the national secondary or the national conference. I never have really, I've never applied to speak at a conference. Usually what happens is they, somebody reads my commentary and they, they realize that uh, I really don't have, have an ax to grind. I'm, I'm not out there trying to market the commentary. It's going to sound, this is going to sound maybe too blunt than it, than it is, but I don't really care if you read it or not. Um, <laughs> I mean, hope you do, but if you don't, that's fine. If you read it, you know, a lot of people will come up to me and say, you know, Hey, I read, I read your opening paragraph. And then I read the joke and then I delete and I'd say, cool, whatever. That, yeah. Whatever. You know, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Yeah. But you know, if, what if you're ever out of a job, I guarantee you'll be looking in that yeah. section. Look and, a little deeper. Uh, yeah. And, and good, good. You know, redistribute the joke. That's fine. I mean, I, I, I used to have a sense of humor, not anymore, uh, but uh, uh, read, <laughs> you know, read the joke. And so they, uh, people, people will see that. And then they'll say, Oh, Rob might, you know, have an ounce of information in him. How much does it, you know, and, uh, you know, let's have him down to speak and or over to speak or up to speak or whatever. And so they'll write to me and they'll say, Hey, we've got a company sales meeting coming up in, you know, April in you know, Tallahassee, Florida, you know, what do you charge? And uh, I'm very, very reasonable. I'm not sitting here pounding, pounding the, the Rob yeah. Christmas speaking drum, but very reasonable. And, uh, you know, coach travel and all that kind of stuff. And I like it because it, 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 I can talk to, to people. I can, I can meet people. And, and like I say, sometimes people say some very nice things. And, uh, and so it's a good opportunity to, to just to, just to show up. Uh, you know, it's not like I've got, you know, an addiction to embassy suites, uh, or, uh, cook, you know, the like chocolate chip cookies of the double tree or something, mm-hmm. but, uh, uh, and I'll tell you travel, unfortunately has gotten to be a real bear mm-hmm. at least this year in terms Heck of yeah, delays and cancellations. I, like I hate it. Yeah, it's not, I, I like being at the event. I don't like getting there or, yeah. or yeah. leaving because it can be 
especially the air travel. It's been, brutal. Yeah, it's, it's brutal. gotten bad. Yeah. So, so I, I, I like speaking. I like answering questions, and I think I do a decent job of, of explaining to people. I know Frank, you do a very good job as well. Explain to people what's going on in in layman's terms to be able for, so they can take that information back to their clients or their coworkers and say, oh yeah, here's why interest rates are going up, or here's mm. what, here's what's going on with this, that, and the other thing. So yeah, but uh, yeah, I enjoy it. I I I I would like to. It's interesting because uh, Ginger brought this up. Like, man, you know, um, there's a lot of. How, should, how do I say this? There's there's those of us that have been in the industry for a while, right? For the 30 plus years or whatever. And there's those of us who have been kind of influencers in the industry. You rob us, you know, Barry and everybody, you know, there's this pack of influencers out there that uh, Ginger's kind of saying, but, you know, boy, everybody's kind of aging out of this thing, you know? And so where's the new kids, you know, where's the new guys, you know? And, 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 and I know they're on their way and there's probably some, I don't even know about right now that are just destroying it. Right. They're, they're, they're doing great. But with that in mind, uh, what I was going to ask you, Rob, is if you could just lay out, because if you just lay out for us, like, you know, what is it that you that you write about? And it does it really because I remember when you when you were first coming out, man, our our CEO and our ops guys, they were riveted to your they were just like, what's he saying? What's he saying? What's he saying? It was um, it was a high level you know, sort of um, commentary that you were delivering that I think that was more more digestible by, you know, the CEOs and the the upper the management, you know, than it, yeah. than it was necessarily for the street level originator, right? For the street right. level guy. So is that, would you say that that's still kind of the case? Or I guess what I'm asking is, is if you could let someone who's watching this or hearing this on the future podcast, wherever this is heard, who might not be familiar with you, right? Might be of the younger, you know, a, a, a newer originator, been in the business two or three years, isn't even 30 years old yet, you know, might not know about you, doesn't know about me, I'm sure, you know, you know what I mean? And what, what's the kind of commentary can they expect, you know, and is it, is it usable, you know, from a street level uh, originator sure. standpoint? That's a, that's a very good question. I, I don't think I've ever been asked that question. Huh. So the, the commentary initially was to for loan officers. I would I, I would I would put out investor updates. Hey, Countrywide is doing this. Washington mm -hmm. Mutual is doing that. Long Beach is doing this. Lehman Brothers is doing that. That kind of thing. And then I would put in about why interest rates were doing what they were doing. And then as the subscription as the as the numbers grew, I found myself being asked to explain. You know what is a basis point, or uh, why is why are why are rates going up, or more you know how does an adjustable rate mortgage adjust, or, or more philosophical not philosophical but more kind of educational basic, yeah. yeah educational things and I like writing about that because uh, the the industry needs education mm -hmm. and then it would it's fluctuated because sometimes when there's so much news coming out. It just, it's just, it's like I just put the news out there. When things are slow, that gives me a chance to explain. Hey, here's what a secondary marketing person does every day. Mm. Hey, here is, uh, you know, here is what is talked about in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's charter. Mm. You know, here, here, uh, here is why they're doing what they're doing. Mm. And so it kind of ebbs and flows in terms of what I'm writing about, mm. and I think. One of the things that I pride myself on, and you know, probably sometimes I miss the ball, but is to kind of know, given given the email questions that I'm getting on a daily basis that I'm receiving, I kind of get a sense of what is what is on the minds of originators and CEOs and so forth. In terms of CEOs and managers, I mean, I, I've run companies before, and my the people that I tend to uh, this, this is going to sound more stuck up than it, I mean it, but when I go to a conference, it's typically the CEOs that, I, that and the owners that I'm that I'm hanging out with at the cocktail parties. Mm -hmm. um, but when I go to a company event, oftentimes I'm 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 just shooting the breeze with the originators or the processors or the underwriters mm -hmm. and so forth. So it kind of depends on the event where I am in terms of uh, who I'm who I'm socializing with and who I'm who I'm hearing information from. But in terms of the information that I put out, it's based on what I'm hearing 
from mm. the field and mm. what the concerns are. Uh, and I think there are a lot of concerns now, especially given the business cycle and given where we are with the market. Uh, so, and that's on everybody's mind. So I, I try to try to try to make people feel okay with what's going on and remind them that we're in a cyclical business, whether you're a CEO or an owner or some new loan officer assistant that got hired, you know, a year ago, and this is your first job out of college and holy smoke, what, what is going on with this business? Uh, because it is, it is cyclical, but I try to, uh, I just try to get the information out there. In terms of the, the capital market section, which we put out every day, that is really, I mean, there's a lot of trader talk that's yeah. out there, gobbledygook that I can't understand, that take, or it takes me too long to understand. And if you're an average loan officer or even a CEO, you don't really care about some of the things that the traders are seeing. You care about what impacts your rate sheet, or they want that information distilled into something that they can read and say, oh, that's why there are no prices above par mm. on a rate sheet. You know, Rob explained it. So mm. that, that the secondary marketing and capital market section, I do try to try to try to translate some of that information into easily digestible bits. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge, but I'm, I'm doing okay with it. Mm. Well, and I think in relation to that, because you do the explanation and the education, I think it's an opportunity for loan originators to take that information and to share that information with their real estate partners, with their clients. And I don't know how many originators are seeing that as an opportunity. I know we see a lot of videos you know, talking about what's happening on the market. They're, you know, doing screenshots of MBS Highway and Mortgage Coach. And I see your information as one of the few in the industry that does provide that education on the whole and as well as the underneath. And so I think as an originator, it's an opportunity, honestly, Rob, to take what you're doing every day and to take little snippets of that and share that information. Because, you know, you think about, new originators that are coming into the industry and even some who have been in for a while are learning from that. And then you look at the realtors and they really don't know. And all they have is what they're hearing in the news. Right. So, so that's an opportunity. I had uh, several years ago created a, a website called uh, 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 knowledge for real estate agents.com. <laughs> And I thought I can I can duplicate what I'm doing with mortgage banking for real estate agents. And uh, I had uh, kind of embarked down this path, and I realized that now nothing nothing against real estate agents. All right, they're you know God bless real estate agents. God love you know God loves Terry. <laughs> anyway, but they for I found out that for many real estate agents. They didn't care what was going on outside of, let's say, five square miles of where their office is. They, they just didn't care what was going on with economic trends in the West or the East, or they didn't care about this, that, and the other thing. They wanted to know that a new signal was going in on the corner and that the school district was repainting their lines so the road was going to be closed and, and what, you know, what a white picket fence, you know, cost to paint or whatever. I mean, it was very specific realtor knowledge. And I know Inman does a very good job in terms of, of dealing with real estate agents, but I have my hands full of dealing with mortgage bankers and banks and credit unions and, and brokers and so forth. So I, I focused on that and I didn't go with the real estate agent side of things. But yeah, I mean, for <clears throat> I found over the last few years, several years that real estate agents they don't care so much about getting a postcard with the latest pumpkin pie recipe from mm -hmm. their loan officer. Yeah. They want a subject matter expert. I know that term is overused, but they want to, they, they've usually got one lender who's got the best price and they've got one lender who uh, is great customer service. And they've got a third lender who might be able to put together hairy deals, uh, non-QM or whatever, and make those work. And they've got, so they've got this, Kind of this, this group and for them to call up any originator talk to any lender they want information 
They don't want to know, hey, don't forget to change your clocks this weekend. They want to know, hey, this borrower, he declared bankruptcy, you know, three years ago. What can we do for this borrower? That's, that's where their heads are. And so, yeah, for, for my commentary to go out and even if it just helps one loan officer a day, talk to one realtor and give that realtor the answer that they're looking for, you know, that's, that's you know, job, job well done. Mm, yeah. yeah. It could certainly the be used thing, for that. That's for sure. Yeah. The other thing I want to do. So, so first of all, just to kind of recap, Rob started this really just as an an answer to providing information. And so, you know, think about that, just providing that information. And then it grew to where you probably have one of the largest um, really lists as far as emails in the industry. That truly is a true list, because I know when people do change companies, they do resubscribe to you. So if you're getting those people saying, oh, hey, by the way, I've moved. Can I, you know, resubscribe? That's a good sign. The other thing that you um, do in 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 what you send out every single day is at the very bottom is always a joke. And so the fact that you combine that information with also your personality um, of having that joke in there, I think that's important. And so you know when you're thinking about putting something together, you know, be open to that too, if not just having the information, but bringing your personality in as well. And uh, I always look forward to the jokes. Yeah, because sometimes they're actually pretty good. <laughs> you know, the joke, I don't know, I don't know if we're running out of time or not, but uh, the, the joke is a, is a whole different, uh, is a whole breakout <laughs> session about the I joke. bet. Yeah. You know, if, they're, if, they're, if they're too racy, uh, and, I, and, I, and I tend towards racy humor, uh, I will hear about it. Yeah. Uh, on the other Gotta hand, be careful. If they're, if they're too dumb, uh, <laughs> I hear about that too. I'll get emails like Rob, you know, you've lost your edge. What Come on, man. <laughs> uh, but, but it used to be on the trading desk. There was, there would, there would always, there would inevitably be, you know, like John Denver would crash into Monterey Bay and suddenly there'd be a bunch of John Denver jokes or right. Michael Jackson would die. And suddenly there'd be a bunch of Michael Jackson jokes. So the, the Wall Street, the trading desk humor, and, and you know, they spread like wild, wild, fly, wild mm. fire. And mm. I always found that, you know, you get to know the clients and what kind of jokes they like. And so when you're talking to them about mundane, well, here's your position, you talk, took in $5 million of the locks yesterday, and here's what I think, blah, blah, blah. To be able to spice that up a little bit, you know, a little bit of sugar helps the medicine go down. Sure, uh, was was very valuable to people, and so yeah, and and every you know, Lee, I have the same Cinco de Mayo joke every May fifth. I've got <laughs> you know Thanksgiving jokes. I've got Christmas jokes that I tend to repeat. But um, yeah, there's some you know people still have a sense of humor. I think it's important to maintain a sense of humor through you know what what we're going through now, for example. Exactly, humor's so, always uh, been king. Yeah. So we'll have to have you back on because I think, you know, talking about what's going on right now, you know, especially coming into the new year, I'd love to have you talk about that, which we didn't really get into a lot of that. So, um, you know, thank you so much for hopping on. Um, I know that you have a lot of great information to share. For those of you who are not on Rob's list, you can find information at robchrisman.com, right? And, uh, and we are going to have Robbie Christman on in a couple of weeks. And so, uh, so we'll get to see the other side of the story <laughs> as far as uh, what he's doing. He has hair. <laughs> and he, Not for he, long. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got quite, quite the hair. He'll be interesting. He, he, he shaves about once a quarter now. And, uh, <laughs> so sometimes he looks a little rough around the edges, but well, we're coming uh, off a no shade November, so we'll see what he looks like. In a uh, weeks. <laughs> there you go, awesome oh, stuff, great. Rob. Thanks so much. All man. right, yeah, thanks so much. Always good, later. always yeah. great to see you. Okay, right. and thanks, guys, and we will see you all next week. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Frank. Very see well. you guys. Okay, bye. bye.